Okay, but you'll stay at the university. Yeah. Yeah. Still working. Yeah, I can replace it, but uh, you know, uh, and they're not going to both break at the same time. <laughs> oh well, maybe they will. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, I see it's 7 o'clock, so I'd like to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call to order the June 1st, 2022 meeting of the Environmental Commission, the Charter Township of Meridian. We'll have two opportunities for public remarks this evening, and if anybody shows up, they may take advantage of those. Our first uh, item on our agenda, then, is approval of the agenda. What do you would like to move to adopt the agenda, Tom? Commissioner Frazier. Second by Commissioner Garcetti. Any uh, changes or we're looking, uh, to, sorry, any changes to that agenda? Without objection, the agenda is adopted as circulated. Moving to the approval of the minutes. We have some uh, minutes from March 2nd, which it looks like we revised on May 26th. And, uh, we had, I think, made a, a number of, of changes to those minutes, so they're up for final adoption tonight. Am I remember, remembering that correctly? Yes. yes. Gotcha. Entertain a motion for adoption of the minutes as revised. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second. Any uh, changes to those minutes? Without objection, those minutes are adopted as revised. And presumably we'll see minutes from the May 26th meeting at some point? That's the hope. Yeah, That's the hope. <laughs> That's the hope. I'm crossing fingers as we speak. All right, well, that takes care of the administrative business and brings us on to new business, which I think is, I like to think of it as new, even though it's an old business kind of item, the Climate Sustainability Plan updates. Last time um, we've been hearing from the energy team about their initial thoughts on uh, revisions to the energy sections of the climate sustainability plan, which would then include some transportation components because it seems like that's where that item mainly fits well. And uh, moving on to a next section of the climate sustainability plan, which in the original version was uh, recycling. And then it had some sort of an item about uh, organic recycling. And now we're sort of moving into a proposed new section or new, newly framed section of, of food and compost. So uh, uh, Commissioner Lafferty has, has been leading that effort. And I'll uh, give her the floor to walk us through the items that are in the uh, packet. And uh, looking forward to discussion. Yeah, so um, Leroy and his green team, of course, have the overall you know, recycling goal. But within that is. Um, organic waste management and the hope is to keep the organic waste out of the landfill and um, use it to improve our soils and um, you know completely recycle it uh, so we've come up with three goals and uh, Tom Carey from the uh, food uh, the um, <laughs> farmers market farmers market is is on that and uh, contributed uh, quite a bit as did Anna Colby to the the three goals that we have and um, they're pretty extensive and I know we're going to need one editor when we all get our goals in to make them similar so this is this is really quite a bit of information but it does provide a, a context and maybe a helpful context when that person that same editor goes through that they can properly reduce it so um, would you like any of this displayed on the monitors for um, I, I don't know I'm worried it's a little tedious but um, Anna do you want to do you, do you want to speak to the you um, you certainly inspired us in the beginning to even go this far we were just going to talk about composting and then we we expanded before we even got started so maybe you want to just add a little bit here sure so so yes I think you know this we had talked about it being uh, it's separate section in terms of being more comprehensive about about food systems so Val, do you, or Valerie, do you want me to 
walk through the objectives then? Or? Well, I, I don't think we need to reread them. I mean, you know, read them out loud. But the, the reason why including food into the whole, why, why are we doing food to composting, not just composting? Maybe you could. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I think certainly, well, I, I mean, I guess there's a, a few reasons there. So certainly reducing food waste is a, I mean, food waste is a large contributor to, um, you know, to CO2 emissions. And uh, if you look at the, and we actually have a graphic here, um, but if you look at the food recovery hierarchy, um, when you're reducing food waste, the kind of your, your number one option is to, for food that is still edible to be um, diverted to people that, you know, that need food. Um, so that's, you know, really your number one option in terms of, I mean, well, for many reasons, but we are the Environmental Commission, so we can talk about, you know, that being best for environmental sustainability. Um, then the, your second kind of best option is to move food to animals. And your third, you know, option then is to, you know, is to compost um, generally. I mean, this is very generalized, but um, because composting in itself can, you know, create emissions. So, um, so I think that was the first reason for the expansion of this section uh, was to um, make, because some of our main priorities then are gleaning. So gleaning being moving usable food from restaurants, grocery stores, you know, from often, most often from businesses, if it's not saleable uh, or going to be used to, to people in need. So a lot of times that food is then moved to a food pantry. So that is one of our primary um, objectives here is, is to reduce food waste. Uh, through gleaning programs and then, you know, kind of working down. I don't know that we necessarily have uh, something specific in here in terms of, of animals. So, that, you know, there's some different logistics to that. Um, but it's certainly building up that gleaning component and that composting component. Of course, there are a lot of other environmental implications of our food system. Um, you know, related to, you know, not just our air and our atmosphere, but also the quality of our water. Um, there is environmental implications along, you know, every aspect of our food system. I mean, certainly there's the, you know, end of the line aspects where we, you know, where we've been talking about food waste, but there's also, you know, environmental implications of harvesting our food, um, you know, of the practices that our farmers are using of transporting our food, certainly food that is transported long distances, um, ha tend to have a larger environmental uh, footprint. So for that reason, um, you know, some of these bigger system practices, we also wanted to address some of some larger food system goals in, in the environmental, in this section of, of the plan. Uh, and most of that, I would say, and once again, this is generalizing, uh, revolves around um, enhancing our local food economy and supporting our local food system. So, gen, you know, and once again, this is very generally speaking, but our, you know, small farmers, small local farmers are going to have less of an en environmental footprint for the, f you know, not only does it support our local economy, but it also has a reduced environmental footprint. Um, you know, smaller and local farmers, even if they're not technic, you know, not organic farmers, because there are barriers to becoming certified organic. Um, so sometimes people, farmers have good environmentally sustainable practices, but aren't necessarily organic, particularly our small farmers. So, you know, not only does supporting our local food system and our small farmers support the environment, supports our local economy, supports, you know, supports people and businesses with, within the township. Um, so, so we have um, also have some strategies on increasing uh, production and sourcing of sustainably grown food products um, by town, you know, township businesses, residents, and a lot of that has to do with um, in increasing production and sourcing of locally grown foods. So um, there are a few other, and 
there are a few other, um, I, I guess the other end of this also is, you know, there are definitely some strategies we have in here around education. Um, both, uh, I mean, a lot of it is about, I mean, there might not be the immediate, you know, impact, sustainability impacts of education, but I don't think I need to explain to everybody the importance of, of education. So those are some of our, our major um, strategies and why we've expanded beyond composting. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that part of the gleaning also besides like maybe pre-consumer food, food that isn't used, you know, if, if, we're, if we can find an avenue to make use of that, but also agricultural products is mainly what we're doing now, and that is produce that's not being used but has a short time uh, horizon to, mm -hmm. and so we we're, we're actually uh, have already started a program, uh, and we'll hear more about that at our next meeting, but um, and then the, the last set of, of goals, the third one, is, is just to reduce organic materials going to the landfill. Yes. And there's a, um, several, several suggestions that we've talked about um, individually or in tandem with the green team or um, in hopeful educational seminars with MSU. So it, it all depends on, on what's happening at a recent um, uh, educational program that I was able to attend, but thank you, Meridian Township. Um, they said the reason to go composting versus a digester would be, is your source of organic waste, if you will, is it continual or is it sporadic, like spring and fall? And if it's spring and fall, then composting is likely the best way to go. But if you can find a continual stream of it, as in supermarkets and restaurants as, as well as whatever else then it makes sense to go the digesting route so that I found that very helpful to to get a handle on it um, so there, there's actually a lot of stuff going on in that area and uh, we've been having speakers as you know and it's it's uh, if nothing else it's uh, made us a little bit smarter so hopefully we'll we'll make better decisions so there and I will add one, uh, one more additional thing is that we have tried to align our strategies with the uh, with the strategies of the Michigan Good Food Charter uh, wherever possible. There are you know statewide efforts certainly going on around our food systems and and building up our low, in, our and and so the Michigan Good Food Charter has a whole section on sustainability <laughs> food systems that where they've done a lot of work and suggested a lot of strategies for you know cities and townships like ours to move forward on the sustainability uh, of our food and our food system so we have um, consulted that and aligned where it, it made sense and you'll see we are still trying to work out some of our specific goals so we're looking at trying to get some additional information on where the township is at currently or on some of these and and what's a reasonable goal in terms of reducing you know reducing food loss is, is one that sticks out to me um, but I know there's at least one other um, oh yeah reducing organic materials going into landfills so we'd, we'd like to actually get some some specific goals on how much we'd like to reduce in the next five years but we're still doing the research on on what that would look like So questions? we'll open the floor for discussion. <laughs> and I just yeah. ask a simple question uh, that, you know, when I sort of try to explain this to civilians, so to speak, uh, their first reaction is, isn't most of the food circulation process private, one way or another, whether it's restaurants or supermarkets or whatever, or individuals? How do we as a public entity engage that in a way that that moves the moves the pointer actually i think they're all looking trying to find solutions themselves um, on how to uh, what's the best environmental way to get rid of their organic waste and also the most economical so um, by doing it locally um, uh, it certainly solves a lot of that problem we had a speaker from msu that addressed the group about a digester and um, you know, he said the economics are such that 
uh, if, if, if you can justify one to pay for itself within a five-year period, that you can go to the restaurants and say the price that you charge to take their, um, to charge them to take over their stuff versus what they have to pay for a landfill is just, you know, huge um, distance apart. So just on economics, it, w it would sell itself. The digester side of things. Yeah, yeah, the digester side. More on how do you encourage people to use less food to begin with, oh. or, or get food to people who need it, you know, or influence the flow. Before, sort of yeah, the I first two rungs of the food recovery hierarchy. I agree with you. The yeah. the digester is sort of the the universal. Um, uh, yeah. Much in some ways better than compost in terms of gas release. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, it's better. So this was Dana Kirk who talked. No, uh, uh, it was else? Dr. Leo. Wait, yeah. Oh, Wiley, well, yeah, okay, yeah, same, same team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I think just like with any recycling topic, the first the first step is not to use so much. Right. You know, you don't really, do you really need, you know, five jackets or whatever. Right. So, I mean, you know, I guess we just have to continually work on, you know, it's a habit we all have, and, and habits take a while to change, so we just need to keep on um, sharing that message, I guess, so. I would um, underline as well that, um, most of the uh, efforts that I've been hearing about in the discussions of the group, whether it's the Digester or Hammond Farms or a regional marketing feasibility study, all of those exist because of either some federal or state subsidy that's being provided to get the technology to a point where it's seemed to be paying for itself. Mm -hmm. So it, none of those advances would have happened, the new Digester at the uh, well, uh, sewage treatment plant. All of those things are, are uh, basically municipal or state and sometimes federal uh, programs that, that are able to get those off the ground. And, and I think all the sources for um, the NRDC and, and all the different you know authorities on uh, or that pr provide learned studies on food and, and, and that sort of thing say it's not that we don't have enough food; it's that we waste it. And you know, I mean, it's like 40% waste or something ridiculous. So, you know, there's just a lot of work to be done in that area. Sorry, Anna. Fine. I, I was just going to add, you know, I see it fairly similarly to, you know, many of the other things we do as a township. I mean, that's when we have policies and we have systems, we're essentially trying to influence people's behaviors. So uh, I think, you know, part of that is as a public entity, what types of systems can we put in into place to help people to glean? So certainly there is an education component of like why they should, but I think then there's the bigger question of can we help to form some some systems that make it easy for people to, to do this, whether that is the financial, you know, with the digester, well, there's a pretty clear financial um, you know, an argument to be made there, but I think with with gleaning, there are other arguments or systems that could be put in place to incentivize businesses or people to to make change that helps the environment. At that same conference that you generously sent me to, they had a behavioral psychologist that that had a bunch of research and talked about, you know, you, you emphasize the behavior you want, and um, there's a lot of other breakdowns, but instead of, I mean, you can't just put it out there, and you certainly can't tell somebody what to do. Right. <laughs> um, you know, it just backfires, yeah. but if, if you emphasize the behavior you want and, and allow people to buy into it in certain ways, then it, it has a huge effect, according to the research. Well, I would say that's my territory. Oh, yeah, that's Whatever. right. <laughs> Sorry, what am I telling you for? I know. No, no, I, no, it's good that it's coming other ways because it is a way to, like, get the buy-in, right? Like, yeah. you, you, so how do you sort out getting the buy-in? And yeah. I think there's an educational piece and there's a, a way to incentivize people and to understand how it benefits them. Like, everyone has to understand how it benefits them um, personally, economically, um, and then so you look at the individual and then the, the community, you know, the community at large and then kind of build up from there. They, they were talking about the biggest impact is when you compare yourself like uh, in, in trash collection in a neighborhood that they actually have statistic to say you are on average with your neighbors or you're actually doing better than your neighbors in terms of I mean something I mean it's soft and maybe kind of fun you know but mm -hmm. th that has huge impact I mm -hmm. mean r you can really bump it up that way mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. anyway. I wonder too, you know, and maybe this isn't true, but it seems like we have a lot of grocery stores in the township. It just, you, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about that. It just seems like we started listing them all. 
And I'm wondering, do we have an idea <clears throat> what they do or how much waste they have? We, we have an idea what they do. Yeah. Um, another member of the team and myself went around and asked, and there's mm -hmm. other services out there. It's not just Hammond Farms. There's um, agricultural services that take it and make it into liquid fertilizer and um, the bigger change, you know, Meyer has someone that they work with, um, Target has someone, um, what's the other, oh, Kroger has someone. But interestingly, when we went in there, they had, um, the, the manager told us, oh, only, only produce is taken away and this company wants it and they feed it to their horses or something or cows. And we're going like, really, cows? But mm. they don't take the, they have a floral, whole floral department with lots of waste, you know, the, the flowers when they go bad sure, and sure. whatever, and they don't put those in there. And they mm. go, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, actually, Gabby, who's on our committee, wrote a letter and they're going to they're, they're gonna kick it upstairs on the Kroger front. Oh, so, interesting. So there's, I don't know, <laughs> you just have to keep trying, right? Mm -hmm. There's also a, a piece I think is very important um, in terms of what we as a township can do and what we did uh, with solar was to walk the walk and put solar panels on the roof, make that investment. Mm -hmm. And some of the first accomplishments that I'm aware of in, on the gleaning side are, are on the farmer's market, which is our supermarket, mm -hmm. right? And uh, some of the big successes there and making sure that that midsummer produce is go someplace rather than landfill is is huge and should be tied. I think that the trick this time around is going to be keeping this plan, uh, keeping up with the accomplishments that are actually being made as groups are working on these things. So it's going to be a moving target, but it's exciting because the stuff is already happening. We're not, the groups aren't just sitting around thinking about things that could be done, but actually going out and doing them. So we're kind of almost playing catch up, which is, which is great. It's always nice to have a plan where you've already checked a few things off. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and, and I take uh, your comments uh, Val, earlier about um, editing uh, to heart. Um, I think any one of us who took the three objectives and uh, thought what was the most sensible order for them would probably come up with a different set of order. And I, I'm not sure it really matters. Uh, I think um, besides the benchmarking, which I think is crucial, um, finding out what, what the current uh, status of waste is or diversion is and, and uh, documenting that is, is huge. And I hope that uh, in keeping with the kind of character of the, the plan, that that stuff gets highlighted as wins at the top. These are accomplishments that we've made in this realm since 2017. Um, and uh, then to pose bold uh, objectives below that that are measurable uh, I think is is you're on the right track. I mean, it, just one more comment. It's, it's not just the, the understanding food and in, in, in schools lunches that Anna brings to it, but um, Tom Carey brings the agricultural piece mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So um, there's also some of that built in too. That there's things that you know that we can do to make it. I mean, Meridian Township isn't exactly an agricultural, but it's you know it's not urban either. So. Um, but just to know that, the, con the context that it fits in. Yeah. So I, I, there was a lot of thought that went into it. I uh, was told by uh, someone recently who's just become a vendor at the farmer's market about how long they had to wait for a spot to open up. Oh, really? So apparently the uh, demand for spots at the market is, is high. Okay. And so we're already, again, by virtue of running the farmer's market, we're already accomplishing some of these goals of bringing local produce to the, to the community. Uh, in some cases at least replacing things that would have been imported from great distances. And I think there are some good tools out there to, um, I, don't, I don't know what uh, Tom Carey is able to document in terms of what gets sold, how much gets sold. I know he's very aware of how much doesn't get sold. I think just, just this Saturday was the first time they did it. Tom and him went through a pilot program, so we'll find out. We have a meeting on Monday and we'll find out how they did and then hopefully branch out from there. Um, but um, they w they needed a scale, a certain scale, and Tom just brought it up to Luann and she, he got it, you know? Mm -hmm. So Great. it's kind of cool and she found, well, you gave us a clue on the cooler and like, yeah, they got a cooler, they can keep keep the produce uh, in good good shape over the weekend until uh, the Greater Lansing Food Bank can pick it up or one of the food kitchens can pick it up. And so it's 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 pretty neat. 
Um, I was hoping to hear a little bit more about Objective 2, Strategy 2, which is uh, support local um, production. And we were just talking about the farmer's market serving relatively local um, uh, produce. And I think part of this is, um, if I'm seeing it right, is kind of production more within the township. Uh, yeah. And um, I'd, I'd like to hear more about what, what do you think the, the barriers to that are? I mean... Well, this is pretty much a Tom Carey item here. <laughs> so, um, Anna, can you speak to any uh, of it? Uh, let me see. I'm reviewing which item these are. Well, s There's a farm to school and school garden programs, which we know are already going on and we've supported we, we with We do, yes, yes. Uh, farm businesses within the township. I, I know that since I moved here, it became legal to uh, have chickens as long as they're registered. So that we've actually made progress in uh, encouraging residents to produce that way. Um, I don't see uh, community gardens yet. If maybe I'm missing that. But I know I, that the township has invested energy and, and yeah. resources in community gardens, and they're producing food. So I hope we uh, capture those successes and, and uh, get some strategies yeah. along that line. I mean, I, I, as far as I know, are, are they not run by the, the Greater Lansing Food Bank? Tom Frazier, do you, you, are you aware of? Or? I, I think it varies. Some of them are done by local churches. Some are done okay. by by the food bank. But um, they do a it lot. It seems to be expanding in the area. In fact, I know my church is looking at starting a community garden this year. So, okay. um, all good stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I can speak to that. I, I actually think our community garden um, objective may have been removed, and uh, I mean. Maybe it's not. We have a lot in here, but I remember we had some conversations about this. We kept in the school gardens because of the education component. Uh, I think we removed the community gardens not because we thought that that's not important and good, but that it is compared to the other. I mean, we have lots of things to be working on, and compared to the other things we could be working on, the you know in environment you know the environmental footprint of getting some additional community gardening and you know is, is fairly small compared to some of the other food systems and supporting our local food systems items that that we could have so we were honestly trying to cut back because there's only so many of us and so much one can do in five years but um, I, I can't speak very eloquently to, you know, what are some of the, you know, what are the barriers. I, you know, I know Tom has spoken about some of the barriers to initiating and continuing farm businesses and and other things, but I, I we, couldn't tell you exactly what those are. We should probably try to get Allen Street to address us on the incubation. Yeah, that we've not we've not gone there yet. Yeah, so, that would be a good idea. Yeah, and I I think I remember wasn't um, there Ike. Ike Iodi or something. He was really interested in doing a community garden in Meridian. I don't okay. remember. That was probably like a year ago or so okay. that he came to some green dialogues and was considering mm -hmm. planning. So he was really involved. In, so yeah. and then Allen Street, what they're doing would be fantastic right. to replicate and yeah. partner with them. They're doing a fantastic job. Well, I, I, I do, I do think that Greater Lansing Food Bank kind of has their arms around because they, they sent out several emails about do you, do you want to be a part of one? Mm -hmm. I mean, so they were very open to to that whole um, mm -hmm. concept. So, well, Ron, do you want to chime in on, on this because I know you're knowledgeable about the township past yeah. um, efforts to support Gardens? Um, yeah, it's partly my fault for not sharing the community garden report that we get every year from the food bank. But um, we do have, uh, as Tom was mentioning, about uh, half the gardens are supported by the food bank, and there's other half that are either church related, congregations, or just neighborhood specific. But um, Meridian Township has been a longtime supporter of the community gardens. I think we devote about $5,000 a year. Um, it would that produces just tens of thousands of pounds of produce. I, I would be in favor of keeping it in, and um, but also sharing some of that information with the food group about why, um, what they've been doing, and just um, and how the township has been supportive of that effort. I think that'd be an easy win. Um, also, want to invite Pat Jackson, our our supervisor. Uh, to chime in um, if you'd like to add anything because of course you've supported a lot of these initiatives over the years and we'll, we'll have a staff update in a minute and if you'd like to 
share anything, feel free at, at any point, Pat. It's m most of you know Pat, but if not, Pat um, is our supervisor and longtime environmental supporter. And I hear you're a, also a foodie. I am football court. She likes bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I Thank say, you. Yeah, say from ahead. a psychological standpoint, um, you know, they were talking about how pe um, things benefit people, but also like people getting the buy in. Um, if you want folks to eat healthy or teach your kids to eat healthy, you cook with them. You, you get the you get the buy in. So if you have a community garden and you have people involved in caring for that and tending to that, then they're get, they care about the value, the kind of food that they're eating, um, the community aspect that helps in so many psychological manners to help um, help people go on. Go ahead, Ann. Oh, I was just going to say, I, 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 I am a full supporter of community gardens. I think that part of this was what is, you know, what to prioritize and what's appropriate for a, for a sustainability plan. Uh, I think, you know, at some point we had things that were probably more on the end of uh, food assistance and supporting nutrition, which we want to happen, or I do, I guess I won't speak for everyone. I think the group is all supportive of, but we want to want to make sure that, you know, whatever is in here is appropriate for a sustainability plan. And I hear what, what you're saying is that it very well may be, you know, we, we kept one in for the education component, then maybe, maybe we should reconsider whether the not just children education component but that community education component does really belong so I think we can take this discussion back to the to full the full group and if in fact it has been removed decide if if that's was the right decision great um, I'm looking at another one that's in that same uh, section and it looks like it's going to end up on my plate it's the uh, third bullet on that um, Number two, which says uh, township master plan should incorporate farmland preservation protection and encourage viable use of farmland where possible. Um, sounds great. Um, if the group has any um, uh, further ideas on how that could be reflected in the master plan, that would be really helpful. Um, I can tell you, just jumping the gun on the agenda a little bit, that the uh, the Planning Commission has a committee that is uh, focusing on kind of what many people see as the core of a master plan, the future land use map, our, go our vision for what the future land use will look like. Uh, it's had one meeting uh, and so those discussions have begun. Um, so far we're focusing mainly on the so-called PICAs, the potential intensity change areas of Okemos, Hazlitt and Carriage Hills. and. Um, well, kind of struck by the fact that we kind of knocked two of those out of the park already, and uh, so we kind of got one more to go, and that's that's really encouraging. But it also tells us that that goal of the master plan of 2017 was to try to promote infill development and uh, have the uh, less developed portions of the township be developed later, if if later. So this kind of is speaking to that. What do we do out there to encourage those areas to remain agricultural? or to become agricultural. So the more, if there's uh, people, uh, folks in, in your group that have specific ideas on that, please have them reach out and talk more about it. Great, well, we'll bring that back back to the group. I believe that is, um, with much of that section, as Valerie said, was uh, that Tom Carey weighed in heavily on, so. Great, great. Um, and again, keeping sort of an eye on, on which um, other groups, boards, and commissions uh, we should be uh, uh, connecting to. Uh, we know that on the transportation section, we want to reach out to the Transportation Commission. I would have thought if we're talking about farmland preservation or land preservation, that that group uh, probably, the sooner they are engaged in the discussion of what sort of policies we want to uh, consider recommending to the board, the better. So getting on their agenda with those kinds of topics, I, I think, should be a priority as well. Can yes, I Tom? just raise a question? Sure. And and I apologize for not doing this sooner because I was I've been involved in the the food compost group, but in in rereading this uh, over the last couple of days, 
um, it's the last item under uh, strategy uh, one uh, where it says it's uh, item two incentivizing more food donation by businesses and then we've got the example of township offering tax credits and I'm just wondering if we have that authority because Radiant Township doesn't have an income tax and I'm not sure we have the ability or you have the ability as a township board to offer that on property taxes so I'm just raising that as a question as we move forward that we may want to uh, amend that somewhat. I think I, I was fully expecting that several of these need to be <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Um, that sounds like it may be a question for the treasurer's office. Okay. I'll follow I, yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> um, I I can imagine some similar um, impacts coming from existing policies, but I, I think it's best to check with the, the folks who, who uh, the tax collector. That seems like a and the assessor, really. Um, I'll add, I mean, Please. I think that would be that would be great if you followed up. It would be good to know what we can and, and cannot do and part of our, you know, research going forward about what are the best course of action. Uh, you know, I guess I would like to, and maybe this will become clear as we continue to work through this, but it seems to me like our draft may have more detail than we need or want it to. Um, so, I, you know, I, I I have worked extensively on this draft and I, am, I I think it provides a lot of the information that we need as a as a group to think well what are some of these strategies um, but you know it is unlikely that we're going to you know get far on all of these strategies I think these are like kind of at the moment some of our best strategies and we've put them down on paper and we've talked them out um, but you know, I, I guess at either now or at some point, I think it would be helpful to have some guidance on kind of on what what level of, of detail we want included in the plan um, versus some of the information that you know we have behind the scenes to know like well here's our objectives and here are you know some strategies we're investigating uh, to move it forward. So. Right now, you've gotten kind of all of the detail on all of our thinking, but I don't know that that's necessarily appropriate to get into the five-year plan. I think I mentioned when it began, it kind of gives a context, I think, for what our thoughts are. And from mm -hmm. that, it would, would need to be uh, condensed and uh, made less specific. <laughs> sure. So, you know, what I was wanted to say, in general, I mean, it's fantastic to have all this background, and thank you for all of your hard, hard work. I know you've been working very you know, to get this moving forward and that we're talking about it here is fantastic. Um, but in general, in relationship to all of our different areas, it would be helpful if we had a format. Like, what, what, what do we want? Like, what's our goal and then our objectives? What do we want it to look like so it's consistent across the board? Frankly, I would make my job easier as I do the next part, probably. <laughs> Please tell me what to do. Like, let's agree. <laughs> well, if I could just add, yeah, this was the only one that was brand new, right? Everything right. Yeah. Else, right. It, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we were, we were, you know, we were reaching everywhere to try. For to sure, no. And I think it's together. super great for yeah. like the education and educating all of us and on the background. But in general, like, what? How should we? How should that look? How should they all look consistently? You know, energy, um, food to compost. You know. Um, Recycle, yeah. you know, all the recycling areas, you know, water, like how right. should it look? I, can we decide that today? Somehow? Um, we, we, we could, we could. I, I think uh, my, um, uh, the preference I've expressed in the, in the past is that the structure of the existing document, the 2017 uh, Climate Sustainability Plan, I think is, is appropriate. I'm not sure all the stuff is in the right place, and that's why we're kind of sh moving stuff around. But the idea of having overarching objectives, this is what we're trying to get to, and then having these strategies that are more specific, and then with some very specific targets underneath them, is, I, I think, an effective part of our current plan. And I'm, I'm encouraging us to, to, do, to stick with that kind of layout. So I would go back and, and look at that plan and, and see, uh, use that as a template. But I'm not the only 
voice here, so I'm just putting that out as my own personal. I think, and, I, and I do think it's, it's helpful to have, you know, like I'm looking at just the transportation section here. We only have a paragraph that's background, mm -hmm. just some real basics, like it talks about transportation produces 27% of greenhouse gases, stuff like that, so just a little context. But then, as you pointed out in the past, too, it's, it's good not to belabor it, but it's good to have a section that talks about what we've already accomplished. Because uh, I think the, the plan is an educational tool. So in addition to the, uh, what you mentioned, I think a little background. This is, uh, obviously, you've got lots that you could put in there. And then uh, a focus on what we've already done is, is real helpful, I think. So the past and current progress section? Yes, yeah. And I, I think Leroy has encouraged us to be brief, a, a bit brief, but also we need enough flexibility because we don't know what five years are going to bring or, or what, you know, what opportunities are going to be before us. Um, so it needs to be flexible, but I agree we also need some specifics to, so we have something to be pointing at. So, yeah, a challenge. <laughs> Clear as mud. And I guess one more procedural question before we move on to the, the next section. So uh, objective number three, we currently say shared with the green team. And so what I'm wondering since that kind of deals with waste and recycling, would it be the intent to put that under the waste and recycling category of of the su sustainability plan or leave it here um, or is there a preference um, just kind of curious as to where that I don't should know. be yeah I don't I mean that was the conundrum to me too it, it also you know it brings in part of the gleaning and all that so I I don't know um, I, you know I don't know how to answer that I, I would say I mean just just my initial take on it would be to leave it in this section and then follow like the waste and recycling section comes directly mm -hmm. after um, and then I think we did talk about in the last meeting how we could also put some language in there to you know to say to indicate where there's some crossover um, just to say well this is also relevant to this section or you know something that where we can indicate because a lot of this stuff will have overlap I think Maybe in the next five-year plan, it will be together or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's a number of editorial solutions to that. Okay. Um, if the, we see uh, an inorganic waste management um, section emerge, say, from the green team that wants to stand on its own, I don't see why not. What order they go in, I'm not sure it matters. It would be nice if this one, this objective on minimizing organic waste was close in proximity in the outline. But again, if you've got these crosswalks that say, hey, the rest of the waste is over in this section, go look there, then I'm, I think it's really a, an editorial preference at that point. Okay, and thanks. It might um, behoove us as well to think down the road a bit as we do get a more complete document together um, recruiting a set of, of um, uh, reviewers or outside eyes who haven't seen it before who are willing to pick it up and read it and say I don't understand this you know this has got repeated there's you know those kinds of high-level editorial suggestions and I, I can think of a few people who will probably agree to do that and one Great thing idea. in relationship to that I would say is we, I would hope we could write it say maybe at a eighth grade reading level too so mm -hmm. that it's great idea yeah Okay. So any further discussion on the current draft of the food, food waste composting section? I think this is great work. I'm, I'm really thrilled to see it. I think it's whole new stuff that wasn't with us five years ago, other than one little sentence that said, oh, by the way, there's organic waste. <laughs> so this, it's great to see it blossoming into, into something uh, bigger. Um, we have also talked in the past uh, about wanting to make sure that um, uh, issues of environmental justice or diversity, equity, and inclusion are squarely addressed in um, these. And I know that this, uh, one of the main reasons, as Anna explained, for having food as a high topic is because we're concerned about food security and, and food equity. Um, 
so I just want to put a, a, a pin in the, the idea of having a high-level statement at the beginning of this document that kind of sets out a general principle. And if there is one that the township has ad already adopted or adopts by then, then I think we should use that. And then we should address how each of these objectives and strategies reflects that broader overall statement. So it's not just sort of the last chapter, oh, by the way, everybody counts, but it's a, a beginning point of, and I think you know we may want to modify it because many of these are, I think of as intergenerational equity issues. Some of them are today food security, but some of them are what are we leaving as a heritage, and so we may want to uh, have some slightly more specific language that's relevant to, to this plan, but um, I don't want us to lose sight of that, that piece of the plan as well. Yes, I think, I thank you for bringing that up, and I think that we can look at the whole section at, with that lens and, and see where it should, you know, not, I mean, certainly at the forefront, but also what else should be added, um, thinking more explicitly about, about equity and, and whether, you know, there are specific goals to be included there. So thank you. Yeah. I, I suspect, I'm, maybe I'm, this is wishful thinking on my part, that for example, the community gardens, yeah. um, my, my sense is that, um, that the participants in community gardens are a, a, a certain subset of, of the community. Those of us who have the land to have our own garden are more likely, I would guess, to garden in our own property, whereas uh, folks who might choose a community garden may be uh, uh, a different demographic. and. Uh, that it, I don't know what kind of information we have on that or could be collected or if that's relevant, but it, again, it seems like a potentially relevant connection to me. Yeah. Also, using alternative ways to pay at the food market for the, for the produce. Mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. All right. Anything further on the climate sustainability plan? Next time, we're hoping to spend some time thinking about water and wetlands in particular. Is that our hope? Uh, is that, I'm hoping so, right, Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> I've been a bit absent. <laughs> Kim has been on her own, so <laughs> we have a plan. <laughs> great, great, okay. looking forward to that. Okay. Um, if there's nothing further on this item five, we'll move to reports and announcements. And I put myself a little note in here, uh, kind of related to the um, uh, uh, DEI statement. Um, we were uh, congratulated recently by the, um, by the manager for receiving uh, 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 an award that I'm, I'm kind of vaguely aware of. So I hope that credit ends up going to the, to the folks who actually participated in it. But what was it, the Green Communities Challenge? Can, Leroy, can you remind us um, a little bit about how that um, uh, uh, award came about so we can make sure that the right folks are given the credit because I didn't lift a finger, so. <laughs> well, um, as I mentioned um, in the press release, um, this is um, the environmental accomplishments of the township have been born over decades. And um, we've been obviously immersed in several of them. Um, but the Green Community Challenge, um, actually Tom was involved in the earlier phases that's been around for about a decade and we have we have achieved uh, some recognition through that over the years. The challenge was totally redone this year, and there's actually more gold recipients than uh, I've ever had before. Um, um, but it was more it was a bit more comprehensive. There's several categories that were looked at um, related to climate um, policies. Um, just a, br a broad range of, of topics. But um, I'd be happy to share more information about that. Um, not, I think there were 22 communities that received a gold recognition. Uh, Tom, do you want to add anything? Um, not really, other than the fact that, uh, as Leroy indicated, uh, Meridian has participated in the past. The highest level Meridian had received previously was a silver. So I know personally I was very happy to uh, see that Meridian did achieve the gold uh, level this year. And uh, I think Leroy is being a little bit modest, but uh, I think a lot of the credit actually goes to him 
He was uh, uh, the one who filled out all the paperwork to make sure that uh, Meridian got recognized. And while it, it does include activities that have gone on for many years, uh, Le uh, Leroy has, has led many of those. So I think he deserves recognition here as well, personally. Well, that's sweet of you, but back at you. I think we, the uh, trustees, uh, deserve a lot of credit as well sure. um, for supporting these efforts, as well as our, our citizen led teams um, the Wetland Education Group, the, uh, the Green Team, the Food Team. I mean, that's what makes this job interesting and exciting. It's really the work that we do as teams that I think. Uh, makes it happen. So thank you. I really appreciate it. And, and while you're up there, uh, yeah. first, uh, am I remembering correctly that by by virtue of that award, we had some sort of access to some uh, uh, labor, some free, some? Yes, uh, we, um, the, if we had received a silver or a gold award in the past, we were, we were part of the, um, an initiative that uh, basically gives us access to a grad student for a couple of months and started uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in the staff update but um, well why don't you as long as you're up there just continue on if there's no objection tell us in your staff update sure okay we um, we not only get a grad you student plug in your laptop because you're about to die mm -hmm. oh jeez. <laughs> plug in or find another power source okay <laughs> Let's see what I can do here. Or just talk real fast. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Katie Economoku, I think I pronounced her name, and her advisor, um, Alexandra, or Alex Haddad, are, are, uh, are with us. They're going to be helping with uh, promoting some of our green grants that have been sort of, <clears throat> um, haven't been adequately promoted. This picture that you might see here is the uh, the butterfly garden that Okemos Public Montessori has been working on. And what was intended to be a grand opening last Friday was rained out. If any of you would like to go to the ribbon cutting this Friday at 1.30 at the Old Central School at the corner of Mount Hope and Okemos Road, I would invite you to come check it out. The kids are gonna give a, um, do something. I'm not sure, sure exactly what, but um, it's a beautiful little pollinator garden designed around butterflies, designed by kids, and it includes some artwork that the kids made. Um, that's 1.30 this Friday. Um, and uh, that's one of four green grants that were funded. Um, and <clears throat> Katie is hoping to put together sort of some descriptions, get some more, assemble some photographs, and um, help get some of this information working with our, our home TV or communication staff on our website and highlight the, the projects, which include Hazlitt Community Church, um, Montessori Radmore, and Okemos Public Library. Um, John Sarver and Kendra um, Grisesky, Grisesky, uh, are on the Green Grant Review, and, and Courtney uh, are on the Green Grant Review team. Um, so if you guys want to add anything about that, but I'll be keeping you posted of, of Katie's, Katie's work. She also might be helping promote the green <coughs> um, natural um, shoreline initiative that we're doing at Lake Lansing. Um, see if I've got a little picture here. I'm not sure this is going to happen this, well, let me back up. This is a infographic that Katie produced pretty much on her own, highlighting the, the rain garden. There's, um, Emma's gonna be with us in the rain garden doing some weeding next Tuesday um, at 6.30. If you'd like to join us for that, you're welcome to help do some weeding as well. Um, but this is an info, infographic for the people to help identify the weeds versus the, the native plants. So it's just, it gives you a sense of the quality of uh, what Katie um, is coming up with. She's a, gr um, a student in the Graham 
Inst Sustainability Institute at, at U of M. And um, okay, we are in the process of going out to bid on a demonstration project for Lake Lansing. That we're working with the Lake Lansing Advisory Board. And uh, before my computer dies, we're going to be demonstrating several different types of natural shorelines, which I am super excited about because um, seawalls are just a, a challenge and doing a natural shoreline that is erosion pr um, proof is a challenge. So we'll have an, a live demonstration. Um, Janus Ishrady has been working on that with a consultant, Progressive A&E. A &E. Um, and that, that might be, hap we're going out to bid or hopefully have some construction this fall. On, on what property? That is going to be Lake Lansing Park <coughs> South, south, not far from the bioswale that's there right now. Kind of uh, a little bit further to the south, I believe. Um, most of you know about the rain barrel and compost bin sales, so I'm not going to really get into that. Uh, we are going to have a green fair at the end of the month, June 25th. And if you've got, if you'd like to help staff a booth at the market, um, I think Earth Club is going to be helping with that. We haven't decided exactly, or Earth Club hasn't decided exactly what it's going to do, but maybe if you have any updates on that, um, maybe some sort of interactive children's activities. Uh, Consumers Energy rep is going to be there and bring an electric vehicle. And then uh, there's some other exhibits that we're, we're open to suggestions if you have anybody you'd like to see at the Green Fair on June 25th at the market. So um, Bill mentioned uh, Frank's recognition for the award. So we appreciated, appreciated that from Frank. And that's about all I've got before my computer dies here. Did you say June 25th? June 25th, yep. That's uh, one of the days of Celebrate Meridian? At, yeah, Celebrate Meridian starts at 8 a.m. The Green Fair starts at 9 at the market. Yep. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. So with the Michigan um, Green um, recognition, like was there, there was an application that you filled, you filled out? Like, because I saw some of the criteria and is there a certain category that it was awarded in, or or is it kind of broadly? It's kind of a, a point-based system. There's about seven or eight categories. Okay. It includes things like diversity and equity and, and health and broad sustainability topics. But yeah, you get points in each section. Um, I started to open up the, the website here, and you can actually see the checklist at um, migreencommunities.com. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes through the... Um, all those categories. I'm not sure how quickly it'll come up on here. Would it be helpful to see the application just to? Yeah, it would be. I mean, because I looked at what the criteria was, and I didn't know if the criteria, like, uh, yeah, where you're, that's where you're, I was at. And I looked at what, you know, like, I didn't know if that was for 2022 that I was seeing the criteria for. It's 2021. I was, it is, OK. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I was just wondering, like, how, I mean, we've met some criteria in that, but we haven't met all of that so I didn't know how it was you know like for example the equity thing I think there's some work and there's some work in all the areas but certainly mm -hmm. in equity we, there's some work that needs certainly. to be done in that category um, so that's how I was curious how that how we got gold basically I mean you know it's a good no, thing it's a well, great and also <laughs> what's, what's between this and platinum right <laughs> exactly. presumably it's a, a point based system and the more points you accrue the higher your ranking right yeah and I think that's one of the most important thing, points of this sort of a recognition is what's left to do. Where, right, right. How, how do we get to platinum? I, I, I assume there's a platinum. Yeah. No, there wasn't. There actually no. is one. Well, if you're going to have 22 gold, you've got to have a higher category. So <laughs> somebody come, get on these people, and, and we're shooting for diamond. Come on. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because um, some of these, um, these categories might give us some insights in our sustainability plan. So. I was thinking. For example, exactly. equity. That's um, what I was thinking. Some of the stuff we've done, some of it we haven't done, but we might mm -hmm. include it in our plan as we move forward. Actually, now that I think of it, um, if if you've documented those accomplishments mm -hmm. in this 
application, then there's no need to redo that in our climate sustainability plan. We can just lift those accomplishments where appropriate and plunk them in there, right? That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Really save us work. So just throwing more work on Leroy's desk. <laughs> Well, it might make sense to incorporate them into each related category. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pull out the ones we've already reported and, and been awarded for yeah. and, and stick them in our own plan as an accomplishment. Yeah. Hey, look, look, you know, yeah. Hopefully I saved a, a copy of it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. If not, I can go to the Green Communities Group and get it. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I know with the um, League of American Bicyclists, for instance, with their bike-friendly university, bike-friendly community program, they actually... the have reviewers who go through your application and look at what you've reported and make sure that it makes sense and they get community input to make sure it's true. But then they give you a document that says, here are the things that uh, universities or communities that got platinum did. And if you're looking to be in that group, these are the things, go look at these folks, go look at these folks, go look at these folks. And that's super, super helpful for a group that's wanting to know who, who, who are we trying to emulate here. So, yep, thank you. Anything else in a staff report? Do you want to say anything as a staff person? Mm. Our mm. chief elected official? <laughs> I would just say, um, so I'm Pat Jackson, and I'm currently supervising Meridian Township. And I would just add that I'm very happy I decided to come today mm. because I've um, wondered what this group had been doing and what they were up to and I'm very happy to see that you're um, developing a, your and, and uh, updating your sustainability plan. I believe last year we are in, in the past few years we have <clears throat> amended our master plan to include your sustainability plan and so your um, uh, comments about the structure is very much like the structure of the master plan and this year we're only doing an up we're trying to hold ourselves to an update of that master plan and so your update and the kinds of things I've been hearing from you tonight are very exciting as a part of uh, inclusion to that and so um, I've, I've learned a lot in, <laughs> in this time and uh, I hope to come back to other meetings <laughs> to keep up with what you're doing and how you're doing and how you're thinking. We at the board level always welcome your um, input and your um, suggestions and ideas and I hope you will continue to offer those to us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. So uh, now is our time for any other uh, liaison or work group updates, reports, are you, I'm ready to go. Please go. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, the wetland team has been busy, and um, I am so grateful um, to the work. Um, so um, I passed out to you um, our latest last time. I talked about the, the um, this went out to the landscapers about, you know, the wetland ordinance. Can, and then can we put one of those on the document, Cam? I, well, I don't know. I don't know how to do that, but sure. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's been such a great group effort. So, so we're just trying to educate people in all different kinds of manners. And so the latest notice that is going to be going out to folks, um, that this was a collaboration Brandy did, um, Emma and, uh, and I um, did um, worked on this. And so basically, um, it's just a reminder of, to folks like what a wetland buffer is and what the simple do's and simple don'ts are in relationship to it. Um, so, um, you know, basically just kind of basically trying to educate folks like what, what does a buffer look like? So we've got a picture of basically under the important notice, we have a picture of what like a healthy wetland buffer looks like. And then this is a picture right here, what a lot of um, wetlands look like in people's yards. And so, it, um, you know, sometimes folks have, um, you know, especially last year when we had all the flooding that we had, um, you know, people might have been encroaching upon a wetland and not have 
been aware of it. So basically we're trying to address flooding issues um, and also protect our ecosystem at the same time. And so there's some simple do's and don'ts. Um, for example, um, you know, to not add chemicals or pesticides or herbicides, not mowing, um, do not dumping waste, um, adding fill dirt, um, uh, stones or mulch, and not removing um, uh, stumps and roots, and that one in particular can make a big difference as far as flooding goes. Um, and then uh, the simple dues on the back side, um, talking about the benefits of wetlands, which I don't know that I necessarily need to go over with this group because we've talked about it how many times, but um, it's on here. But um, basically, um, planting native vegetation because of the deep um, roots will um, absorb some of that storm water and um, remove invasives. Um, not mowing, uh, or excuse me, protecting that wetland buffer, um, and contacting the planning department if you want to do any work within 40 feet of a wetland, and um, contacting Emma if you would like to have some um, education on native plants. And I'm very excited to say that our first um, wetland demonstration um, garden is going to go in um, uh, at, um, hold on a minute, let me find the right spot. Um, sorry. At Central Park. Um, and so this is a nice collaboration between the Environmental Commission, Land Preservation Advisory Board, Parks Commission. And the first demonstration um, buffer project will go in on June 4th from 1.30 to 3.30. And everyone is welcome to attend. Um, and Eagle Scout Ethan Olds is going to be, um, it's part of his project to be putting in this garden, um, this wetland buffer. So. Uh, it's, it's really great to see um, the younger generation getting involved and caring and, um, and then having the collaboration between all of the, the groups here because it really truly protecting our wetlands um, is really going to require collaboration um, among you know, the staff and between commissions and boards and the community at large. And I think this is a nice opportunity. So we're going to have more demonstration um, buffers in the future, but this is kind of the start in Emma and Rebecca have been working very hard with Ethan on this, so I'm very excited to um, share that. Um, the website, um, Brandy has done a phenomenal job updating the wetlands on the website and putting on pictures of wetlands, um, and so, um, you know, the different ones pre preserves throughout our township, and so, um, and along with educating folks on what the wetland ordinance looks like, and so she's done a phenomenal job, so I'm really grateful for everyone's efforts, um, and then, you know, uh, as our team has kind of gotten larger, and so um, we've come up with some protocols and how to kind of get educational um, materials out. And that's why I'm sharing this with you tonight. If anyone has any feedback for this at all, most of the stuff on here is on the wetland um, uh, brochure already. Um, but this is like a simple notice that's going to be mailed out to phone, um, um, people who live on or adjacent to wetlands. So. Does anyone have any feedback at all? Anything you'd like to change or adjust before it goes out to the community at all? Any questions, concerns, comments? Is that your backyard, Kendall? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about this picture? No, nope, the one I'm talking about. But it's not my yard, but I'm trying to make it. I actually, this is what I did. So over the weekend, my husband and I planted 60 native plants, and we are um, rehabilitating um, the wetland that is in the front of our property that is mm -hmm. th that can be a demonstration area because there's a bunch of reed canary grass in there and so we're trying to take a natural approach and um, have the plants that we put in out compete the reed canary grass mm -hmm. so this is going to be a fun experiment to see if it works yeah. yes mm -hmm. so but actually one of these pictures actually is um, <laughs> I don't want my property right here. I put that one in there. But anyways, um, any questions? Yeah, go ahead. So you, you said that this is being sent out to people that are wetland adjacent. Are you, is part of it, I mean, I guess I'm wondering, do they know that they're wetland adjacent? Would it be helpful to have something that says, you are on a wetland, <laughs> this applies to you? Good point. We did send the letter last year, but you know, probably people don't remember that. So thanks, Anna. Yeah, I wonder if we, we'll sort that out. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Is this a get a green light for the commission? Green light? <laughs> I suggest to review it. 
fantastic. It meets all the brand standards. It's got all the little north arrows and the whole thing, so it's gorgeous. Right, yeah, Brandy, Brandy has done a phenomenal job. She has worked very, very hard, so I'm really grateful to all of her work. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm done. Great, thank you. Anything from the energy team since we heard from you last month? Yeah, a few, a few items. Uh, Your packet includes the uh, final draft of the uh, renewable energy section. And so uh, that's ready for the next step, whatever that step is, I guess, and uh, as we kind of figure out the process. But the most recent meeting, uh, we talked about transportation. And I'm just going to highlight a few things that came out of that meeting. Uh, Bill identified some things that have been accomplished uh, since the plan was first uh, adopted. Uh, safety conversions of uh, Lake Lansing Road, Central Park Drive, Jolly Road, installation of some safe mid-block pedestrian crossings and M43, because it gets back to that issue of identifying things that have been accomplished during the past five years. And then we have uh, four objectives. One is to basically encourage the employees and citizens to be smart com commuters. And we've identified uh, some new strategies or modified some strategies uh, related to bikes and, and uh, electric bikes. One is uh, encouraging uh, secure parking at local stores and restaurants, uh, uh, considering uh, separated protected bike lanes to link residential areas to commercial districts. Uh, and it considered closing down lanes uh, to only bike and pedestrian traffic on a periodic basis uh, to encourage the use of uh, bikes and, and walking. And then we also, uh, our second objective relates to the township vehicle fleet. And as you know, we had a, uh, a fleet assessment done by Consumers Energy. And uh, that assessment identified 46 vehicles uh, that could be converted to electric vehicles. Our fleet is a 100, 110 vehicles, so it's almost half of the vehicles. And so we've put that in as a specific action item objective, action item, I guess, into the plan. And uh, the goal is to do those conversions by 2035 you know, fleets like this, they have a regular schedule of replacing uh, vehicles. Uh, and so what this basically means is that uh, during the normal replacement process where they're uh, buying a new vehicle, where appropriate an electric vehicle will be selected. And uh, that's been real helpful with the consumer's energy assessment because they, they helped identify what those vehicles were in what the, uh, they could be replaced with. Uh, and so, the, you know, these experts who came in are very familiar with the market and what's available. And there'll be additional types of models, of course, coming out uh, very soon in the next years. So I think we're, we're on a, a good track with the township fleet. Uh, I, I don't know what other communities are doing, but I think this is a, a pretty uh, ambitious goal progressive goal to think in terms of converting almost half of your uh, fleet. Because there are some vehicles uh, that are difficult to replace, especially the bigger vehicles like fire trucks and, uh, you know, pursuit vehicles with the police department. Uh, the, the third objective is land use planning. And uh, basically that's a continuation of uh, the uh, Keep pushing the complete streets policy, uh, using the urban services boundary, uh, encouraging cluster developments, uh, other sorts of infill, uh, offering incentives for sustainable developments. Objective four is the educational piece where we're uh, talking about encouraging the use of public transit and car sharing and smart commuting. And, uh, and this is actually an area where uh, we, I don't think we've done a lot, uh, and we could probably do more. And, and probably the Transportation Commission actually had been doing a lot, especially if you think in terms of uh, biking and pedestrians. So uh, that's kind of my report. This is kind of like the first draft. 
So uh, we'll bring this up at the next energy team meeting just to see if people have had some further thoughts. And certainly if anybody here has some thoughts, uh, you know, uh, give us some ideas or uh, uh, comments. And the next meeting too, we'll be talking about the energy efficiency piece, which of course is a very important part. So those are the three pieces we're dealing with, uh, the renewable energy transportation and, and energy efficiency. But yeah, if you have any immediate questions or, or ideas for, you know, what could or should be included here, uh, you know, we could uh, use the help. Here's a quick clarification while people are thinking of those questions. Um, I'm looking at page 15 of the PDF, which is uh, describing a part of what you're just talking about, which is, ah, come on. Objective D2, decreased use of petroleum in the township fleet. Strategy number two, it looks like there might be some words missing there. You were saying uh, electrify the vehicle fleet by 2035. Yeah, that, and I don't know why that happened. Okay. I, I noticed that too. Uh, what it, it's supposed to come out is convert 46 of the township's fleet to electric vehicles by 2035. Thank you. Yep. I guess because it's green, I don't know what yeah. that means. It disappeared, <laughs> you know. In my sheet, it's green, which I guess it means it disappears. disappears. <laughs> the magic of technology. Yeah. Um, yes, Ned. Um, as someone who, it just so happens, I rode the Catabus to campus this morning, uh, and not having done it in a little while, because usually, especially this time of year, it's much more fun to ride a bike. Uh, I was reminded at how hard it is to find out what CATA schedules are. Their website is a disaster when it comes to finding the schedule that's relevant to where you are and when you are. <laughs> and, and I've seen so much better websites in many other metro transit systems and I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can somehow catalyze an improvement because it's, it, it exists. You just haven't seen it yet. The app is called Transit, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. a global app, and CAT is connected to it. So once you have that app on your phone, you'll get real-time APIs on where their buses are. Oh, I know that those things exist, but, but CATA itself, if you go to the CATA site, you don't get told that. <laughs> well, you, you can. I can show you how to drill down. It's, you're right. That's not where they're investing. They're investing in apps that are third-party. Okay. MSU has an app that, that can show you where all the campus bus routes are. Right. So, so, but the point is, you already have to, it, the, the sort of, you know, person walking in the door and saying, I'd, I'd like to figure out how to do public transportation, it's not, it, it's not sort of immediately obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, how do we, how do we, and I, I would say that on the average people in Meridian Township, much, much more than, say, people in Lansing itself or people around campus, barely are aware of buses looping through our communities. Uh, and so the more we can do to sort of draw their attention to those opportunities, not only can you ride the bus, but you can throw your bicycle on the front and do that last mile on your bicycle. It's a, you know, with the, the, the amount of service is modest, but what we get uh, actually could help an enormous number of people um, choose to use more uh, or less, you know, single occupancy uh, cars. Uh, and I just feel as though it's the, a lot of the barrier is information. No, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, I know that the, um, when he first started, the new director of CATA, Brad Funkhauser, uh, did a PR piece. It was called Brad on the Bus. Uh -huh. And he would go out and with a film crew and talk to drivers. He would talk to riders and, you know, it was sort of a meet and greet and get to know the community. But the idea was to provide educational materials that had the face of the organization out there doing it. And I think he had some surprises with the way the services were running and his ability to find out what was going where. So um, I think I remember once um, uh, some township officials uh, riding the number one bus downtown for a uh, community event and uh, enjoying the experience. So maybe we should, uh, probably now is not the right time to do a big um, PR, especially on the number one bus, since it's running a very irregular <laughs> schedule at the moment. <laughs> uh -oh. 
The 22 and 23 are, are still more or less fine. Right. <laughs> and for those who aren't aware, the 22 and 23 are the two circular routes that go from campus to the mall uh, through Hazlitt and through Okemos. Right. So they cover, I mean, they get you within range of a lot of territory. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can throw your bike on the front. So are, are you suggesting then a strategy around encouraging bus usage? Because that seems like it would make sense in terms of our in terms yeah, yeah. of transportation. It ties right into yeah. uh, public. Well, that is pub that is the public transportation. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I was just reminded that it's it's not that easy to figure out if you were just sort of starting and you said, well, I think today I'll try to take public transportation. You might spend half an hour trying to figure out. Uh. Come on, what to do? <laughs> Google Maps will get you there too. Yeah. Just press no, the bus I, I button. Know there, you know? there are ways around. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just going to say, like uh, what Kendra brought up earlier about how you know you have to give an incentive for somebody to take a different route to something that might be a little harder for them versus you know taking a car. So, like like you were saying, you know it's not having it on the CATA's website or not having it easily accessible to anybody who's using it or you know easily to find might be a problem and might lead to actually less people using it. I have a great idea. Let's have a week in Meridian Township where all gasoline costs $50 a gallon. <laughs> just a week, just a week. A lot of people would notice what the options were then. <laughs> Couldn't we just switch the pumps to liters? <laughs> Well, I, I, one suggestion, Luke, I like, I like what you're saying in terms of incentivizing, and I wonder if we, I mean, maybe we do know, maybe we do know what some of those barriers are. It sounds like information is, but we may also consider whether there's some need to get a greater understanding of why, you know, why people may not be riding the bus in Meridian Township, and then and, and from there come up with some strategies. Maybe. Yeah, I, w I would note that the Transportation Commission uh, was created not solely but uh, uh, in large part to um, help provide advice to the board uh, on the services that the township purchases from CATA and the services that it receives. So getting in there and dealing with that I think was starting to absorb too much board time so they wanted a, a group to think more about how that um, relationship works and then they've gotten other responsibilities but that is a core responsibility of theirs to uh, uh, figure out what is it that we're purchasing from CATA and how can we get people to use it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it do we have a date for a, a, any sort of a, a meeting with the Transportation Commission on this section of the Climate Sustainability Plan? Oh, I, I think that's a, a, a good idea that maybe uh, maybe you could facilitate a, a meeting and uh, you know some of our representatives can come and, and talk about this and, and you know explore with them how we can work together. I think that's a great idea. Anything else on energy? Oh, just that, you know, the Solarize program continues, of course, and Val just had her neighborhood meeting, and I, uh, I consider it uh, another successful meeting. Uh, we have a, a fourth meeting coming up on uh, June 4th, the Saturday, uh, that David Arnasti is, is doing his neighborhood meeting. And then we have a, a fifth meeting by uh, Heidi Porter and probably a, a, a sixth meeting. And I think that will probably be it uh, this season. But I think we've been uh, going well enough that, you know, the team has been talking about the possibilities of repeating it next year and making improvements. And so it's, it's I think, uh, been uh, a success and has been going well. and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, we, we've kind of talked about this, the, the overall approach of educating, uh, we've talked about this at the Green Dialogues, the whole idea that one good way to uh, get information out is to have a, a neighborhood meeting and have somebody in the neighborhood who's had some experience with wetlands or energy or whatever and just basically, uh, you know, in, invite neighbors to come and kind of talk about options and stuff. It's a, it's a, uh, I think a, a, a good way to, uh, well, to get people to kind of think about doing things in a different way. Because I think a lot of times, solar is an example of this. People have, some people have been thinking about it for a long time. 
and they just need an opportunity for somebody to kind of fill in the blanks, give them some specific information, maybe give them an incentive. And that may apply to other areas that we work in. So that's it. That's it. Super. Let's see what else. Is there uh, anything from the green team that we haven't uh, heard yet already? Um, not a lot that you haven't already heard. Uh, the green team has really been focusing on events. Uh, I think you all know we had the spring recycling event back in April. Last month we had the distribution of the compost bins and rain barrels. Uh, and then we do, as uh, Leroy mentioned, have the Green Fair coming up in June. Uh, we haven't really focused a whole lot yet on updates to our section of the sustainability plan. So I'm hoping uh, we do have a meeting coming up next week. So I'm hoping we can start that process. And um, that's really about it at this point. So we might uh, look for something from you in our July meeting, or? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we'll, we'll shoot for that. If um, I, I think wetlands is going up uh, in July, but we can we can try to meet that goal, and and if not, certainly by August. At least some pre preliminary these are the things we're talking about is sure fine. Yeah, okay. we we'll want to focus on wetlands mostly next time. I just yes, wonder, do, do you anticipate your group uh, addressing plastics at all? Um, I don't know because, okay. again, we really haven't uh, d begun the discussion, but it um, okay. sounds like that's a suggestion that oh. you would. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't fit in with organic, but it certainly needs to be addressed. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we'll add that to our agenda then. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I just remember something. Yeah, go ahead. So I forgot. I'm so sorry. I forgot this. So when I met with Land Preservation Advisory Board um, last month, uh, one of the suggestions of the group was to add native plants as part of the climate sustainability plan. Um, I know that I think last meeting someone, I think it was you mentioned about trees maybe, or who was that? I don't remember. Okay. But anyway, it was you. Okay. Um, but I spoke a little bit about that, and um, it was that group's um, advice that perhaps we focus on um, native vegetation and I'm not sure how to exactly put that put that in the in the plan but that was um, you know I, we have a um, uh, plant a native meridian happening and all that kind of stuff but basically that that native vegetation will help with you know um, the ecosystem in a num number of ways and and help um, you know with flooding and different kinds of things so I don't know how we want to consider that at all, but that was the recommendation of that group. Mm -hmm. So, any advice? Sure. Excuse me. On that note, I wanted to mention that Amanda Fratarelli took over Cliff Wall's position. She just started at the Tri County, and she wants to help us continue on um, where we left off with the green infrastructure audit, which includes some of that. And okay. so, that might be a nice uh, sort of segue between those topics. That would be lovely. Great. Uh, student action. Anything coming from you guys that you'd like to share with the group? Um, I guess since I'm not going to school anymore because I'm a senior, um, the Earth Club had its like last meeting, um, I think like last week without uh, Anna or I. Um, the new president will be Anna Andrzejczyk and Sarah Lee. Um, and I hope that I can get them involved with this commission. Um, but I will definitely work with them and make sure we have something for the, um, for the Green Fair. So I'm excited for that because I had a good time with it last year. Great, great. Any other liaison work group team reports? Can I just say something? I want to say something to Audrey. I want to say thank you for all of your hard work. I, I see you at all kinds of environmental <laughs> events. Like, you have been a remarkable, you know, gift to this commission and, and to the community. So I don't know how you do it with everything you've been doing, but <laughs> you certainly will be missed. I, I really enjoy all the stuff that I get to do here, mm -hmm. and I think Birdian Township is actually like really. Um, there, I've realized that I've taken advantage of a lot of the opportunities that 
Meridian Township specifically has, and I really enjoy them all. So I'm glad that I've been able to be here for all that. Uh, I'll just report very briefly the um, Planning Commission once again saw a proposal for Hazlitt, uh, Corner of Hazlitt and, and Marsh, and is uh, that pro application will make its way to the Board of Trustees. If you're not familiar with it, it's a mixed use residential uh, commercial redevelopment of that corner, um, and there's uh, a lot of really nice environmental amenities that were included in order to uh, meet some of their requests for waivers. Um, uh, my favorite is uh, 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 the, uh, a trailhead at the top of the um, inner urban where it hits marsh with um, restroom facilities and uh, a little dog park and uh, um, some community open space um, and a fair amount of green space with the whole se section that's wetland being reserved uh, for, for preservation. So um, it, the other day we were looking in that committee I mentioned at the conceptual artist's rendering of what that property could look like in terms of layout and we were looking at the current architectural renderings in the current revised application and it's pretty clear that the, the people who developed the plan looked at the master plan and said that's what the township said they wanted let's bring them that mm -hmm. and so that's um, encouraging to see that that process is kind of yielding you know hopefully we like what we get but we're, we're certainly getting getting pretty close to what we asked for so um, if there's no other reports we have a final opportunity for public remarks please okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to um, speak to Dr. Jackson's concerns about communicating with Kat and I wanted to remind you all that there is a member of the township board on the board of CAP. Uh -huh. I believe at this point it is Phil DeShane, the treasurer. Mm -hmm. And it might be um, useful to talk to him about your concerns about communicating how you use CAP and how, how, how you get to it. Well, I was especially concerned with, you know, a relatively privileged community like this, how they make the transition to, um, if they have to ask themselves, how do I, how would I use public transportation around here, that that shouldn't be a barrier. That, because a lot of people are, you know, what's Michigan? We're in the, in the mold of reaching our 14th year and assuming that we're going to have a car next year, and, and that's, just in the culture, but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I've seen uh, the treasurer at some of the Transportation Commission meetings because of that cattle linkage. Right, so that's great. Maybe when we try I to get a, a sit down with them, we'll see if we can get onto the treasurer's calendar as well. Get everybody mm -hmm. at the table. Yeah. Yeah. If there are no other public remarks, then we're ready for adjournment. Courtney, Okay, did you want to give a board? Um, I do have a couple things. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Thank you. Um, um, we've had pretty full agendas lately, and again, I've been in and out, but um, two things that I think will be um, pertinent to this board is um, we are working and moving forward on our signage in the, in the township, and with that, we'll have our welcoming signs that come into the township, but also focusing on um, here at the township municipal complex, the marketplace and then also um, Central Park. Um, two other parks are Towner Road and Newton Road. I asked uh, Director Maisner like how did they decide where to put things and, um, and, and why here right now and, and a lot of it is because we don't have signage or it is in really poor condition so that'll be exciting to see the the one for the complex will have a marquee so it'll have updates on certain things that are happening in the township as well. Um, the other one, I know there was a lot of discussion amongst uh, many commissioners um, on, on different boards, is the, um, the uh, virtual um, component of the Open Meetings Act. And um, so I don't know if you saw that in our last board meeting, but it, um, uh, Attorney Nessel, um, Attorney General Nessel, had um, dictated that we can accommodate the the uh, the ADA, the um, American Disability Act, 
for two reasons only. One being in the military, you can attend virtually, and there is an option for you to um, obtain an ADA Title II, which is a qualifying disability that has to be designated by a physician. So it doesn't necessarily have to be prevent you from coming, but it could also be if it's inhibiting you from coming. So I wanted to give an update. I know there's a lot of discussion about that, and um, and we, we didn't let that fall off the fall off the agendas, however, where, where our hands are tied in many cases. And that was all I had for board updates. Thank you. Sorry for almost skipping that's over okay. here. That's okay. Yeah, we, we actually had to amend the ordinance to, in order to allow that, that kind of signage because it's a... Oh, because it's outside the well, sign. Well, we regulate all other businesses mm -hmm. changing signs. Um, and if you've ever been up Harrison Road and seen the Breslin Center, that, 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 that some of those signs can be super distracting, and this is not that. This is a change once or maybe twice a day or maybe in case of public emergency sort of thing, but not something where every time you go by it, it's trying to animate somebody playing basketball. So not to worry. But if you, if you look out, you know, their staff are putting signs in the grass that say Farmer's Market. And they, you know, probably better. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right. Who else did I forget? Going once. Well, on the boards and commissions, I will just say that uh, Brownfield Commission did not meet. We canceled the, the meeting uh, this past month. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be here uh, in the mid-20s of June when we presumably will have the next meeting. Uh, and so if anybody wanted to volunteer to stand in at that meeting, um, I'll let you know the minute I know dates and so forth. You let me know. All right. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move by Vice Chair for Second Second and Tom, Mr. President. Any opposed to adjournment? Without objection, we're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>